Hey guys, welcome back. What you're looking at is my water heater and it's actually a solar electric water heater. So all that means is that it has solar connectors that go to the roof and use the sun to heat the water in the tank. And so there's a little control module here that does all the thinking and it controls this pump here that circulates the water according to what temperature is outside versus in the tank and turns it on and off as needed. So it's not just constantly running. And so the issue I'm having is actually with the pump. It recently started not working and it would just overheat to the point where you can't even touch it it would be so hot so that tells me that there's probably a short inside so I went online to research a little bit about these pumps and apparently they can seize up quite easily and mine is definitely not seized up because I did take it apart here to see and the propeller turns very easily and still doesn't work and then there's other people that suggested to hit it or tap it believe it or not that actually worked so I do have a manual control for the pump here I got an off out of and on and the temperature inside my boiler is 113 degrees which is quite nice because the last time it ran was yesterday so what's happening is it's not turning on and just heating up pretty much most of the time but sometimes randomly it will turn on but let's see if it's gonna today so I'm gonna go ahead and click on outer and this light comes on indicating that there's power going to the pump and it's actually running so today it did power on and it's circulating the water right now but in any case, I did buy another pump, which I got online for a pretty good price. And it's basically the same model, except for the Dash 10. Mine doesn't have the Dash 10. But you guys can see that this is a 230 volt pump, and that's the RPM. So it does come with this flange here that you're supposed to, you know, put the pipes in and solder them. And so these pumps are made to run continuously and circulate hot water. So I'm going to go ahead and replace it with this pump, because I don't trust this thing anymore to be reliable. So today is actually a cloudy day, and I'm not sure how much more higher we can go than that should be able to go up a bit all right so it's been a couple hours since it's been running and it's ultra hot right now so I got this temperature meter here let's go ahead and take the temperature right? you guys can see it's 181 degrees on the motor so it is blazing hot and we got 125 in the tank about 148 coming out of the solar panels from the top and about the same going back into the panel so I'm going to shut the pump off so I'm going to turn it back on and see if it goes and it's not moving and usually this is what happens when it gets up to temperature and then it might want to cut on again but it can't or it won't or it waits till the next day to cut on and it doesn't and then there's no hot water eventually but the interesting part is that if you take a hammer and tap it it'll start up again so I'm, so I'm gonna go ahead and try it okay so it's not doing it so when it's too hot like this it won't even start up even tapping it but sometimes it doesn't even start cold and when you just tap it a bit it starts up so in any case something's happening in there and I think it's shorting out so we need to go ahead and change it I'm gonna turn it off and we'll do that at the breaker so now we don't have any more power here so we can safely take this thing apart all this stuff is super hot I'm thinking maybe I should wait till it cools down a bit so yeah, we see that we have a little, looks like a start capacitor there. And that kind of makes me wonder if maybe that's the issue, but I have a feeling it's not. So I'm going to cut all these wires loose and then get this piping out. And I do have some valves here that I'm going to close on each side. That way it isolates this piece here. And then there's one, two, three, four hex bolts. And this thing should just come right out. All right, so the pump is out. I can't really tell anything really wrong with it. Here's the new pump. I took this flange off of it and it appears to be exactly the same as the other one. So one thing I can tell is the windings on here are nice and fresh, but the ones over there, they look quite burnt and darkened. I'm thinking that winding is maybe shorting out or something to that extent. But in any case, now that we got the new one, it should bolt on right where the old one was. So I'm going to go ahead and reassemble it and we'll turn it on and try to see how it works. All right, so the new pump is back on and it was actually not hard at all. So there's just these four bolts. And it comes right off and then disconnecting the power. So let's turn on our breaker. We got power to the controller and let's put it on auto. And there it goes, I can hear the pump. So yeah, I can definitely hear it moving water. Seems like that's what it's doing. So while that thing's running, let's see if we can pull this rotor out of here, out of this old one, so we can see a little better maybe. It should come out. So it's coming out, but with difficulties for some reason. But it should pop right out, there it goes. So yeah, I'm not sure exactly what went wrong, but if we look inside where the windings are, we can see how they're really dark right here, almost like burnt. Definitely looks worn out and tired, or maybe this piece is deformed, who knows. So if your issue is not this, but let's say a stuck pump, you could just replace this piece here and stick a new one in there and it'll run just fine, because sometimes these get seized up. And by opening it up and just turning it, sometimes it will help also and get it running again. 
But yeah, as you see guys, these things are not too complicated and actually quite simple. Little pumps and they're very durable and they run and run 24-7 for years and years if they have to. So, Alright guys, so I put everything back and everything seems to be working just fine. The pump keeps turning on and off as it needs to when it regulates the temperature. And it is staying relatively cool but it's actually quite warm. I think the reason for that is because the water actually goes in there. It's semi-water cooled I guess. So it's going to be more on the hotter side than a normal motor. So yeah, if you have one of these, then there's a few things you can do. If it's not working, try tapping on it, try opening it, and then turning the propeller and see if it's jammed or not. And when you do that, you can kind of see the windings also if they're burnt or not, kind of like mine were. So yeah, hopefully this video will be useful to somebody. And thanks for watching, and see you next time.